I'll show how AuthGuardian can be used to set up the entire authentication and authorization flow for several different apps in one centralized place in just a few minutes. Uh, I'll set up the entire auth flow for an internal application hosted on Netlify, for an internal API, and for a Hasura based application. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, I have my rules over here, and whenever every rule has some conditions, and when those conditions are met, I have some effects that I want to happen uh, for our JWT. And the JWT is going to contain everything we need in order to authenticate with these services. So um, I have a few things that I just always want to happen. And so you can see I'm starting to get a preview of my JWT already. Um, what I always want to happen in the beginning for uh, my application and for my um, API is I always want in the user.roles, I always want to add in some JSON value, which is a user. And uh, for Netlify, I'm going to do the same thing where I always want to, uh, so let's go ahead and remove this and say for Netlify, we'll add a user role of user and of visitor. So I may use this in a couple of different places. Now on Hasura, I'm going to go ahead and always set the default role to user, and I can override that later in subsequent roles. But by default, I always want a Hasura um, individual to have a default role of user, and I want them to have an allowed role of user. So these will always run, and you can see I've built up um, all of the information I need for uh, my internal API, for Netlify, and for Hasura. But now let's make it so that it's a bit more specialized. Next, I want to set up the authorization flow for our internal application, which is a dashboard hosted on Netlify. The way we're going to do this is it will be hosted under slash dashboard, which is just a normal HTML page. But we're going to take advantage of Netlify's role-based access controls and say that you can only access that page if you have a Netlify role of admin. And the way I'm going to do that is I only want users who are part of my GitHub organization to have that Netlify role of admin. So let's see how we would do that. Let's go into GitHub and we'll say that if this user is logged in on GitHub and is a member of an organization called OneGraph, then I want on Netlify to add a user role of admin. And you can see right now I get this preview of what would happen, but I'm not logged in. This is based off of my current logged in status. So I can test this and see, uh, I know that I'm a member of the OneGraph organization. And so now that we have that, you can see that uh, Netlify now has a role of admin, and this is great. Um, similarly, I'm going to add the same thing for Hasura and say that I want to add an additional role of admin. And in fact, I'm going to say that um, the default role in this case is also admin. So you can see that uh, the this rule has passed, and uh, Hasura thinks that I am a admin now, although I'm also allowed to be a user uh, based off of this GitHub information. And if I remove that and rerun it, you can see I just become a normal user, and uh, I'm not allowed to be an admin on either Netlify or Hasura. So let's go ahead and log back in. And now I'm going to go ahead and say uh, one other thing is I want some parts of my site to be accessible to anyone who's ever contributed to a certain repository. Uh, so the way I'm going to do that is say if you have on GitHub ever committed to, for example, um, let's say one graph slash graphical explorer, I'm going to do two things. Uh, first, I'm going to say that on Netlify, I want to add a role of contributor. Um, the other one is maybe I want to use this, for example, with a Shopify site or um, some sort of commerce site where I want to recognize the users who have actually made a comment or a commit into one of my open source projects. So what I'm going to do is add a custom JSON value here, which is going to be user.discount. And I'm going to set that to be the um, maybe 10%. So let's say. Uh, 0.10 and you can see here that uh, I have committed to this project and so now this discount uh, can be used inside of my API. Uh, the last thing I want to do is uh, just set the user ID. So I'm going to say if the user is logged in on GitHub, uh, so say login status is true, then I simply want to set 
the Hasura user ID to a built-in value. Uh, you can see I can choose lots of different things like Salesforce email, Spotify email, um, but I'm gonna say I want the GitHub user ID. Uh, similarly, in my API, um, which is uh, also going to use the same JWT, I'm going to say that I want you to set the value at user.id to that same built-in value of uh, GitHub user ID. And so now you can see that we have a user which has roles, uh, the discount applied, uh, their ID, uh, and maybe just for uh, the UI, I also want to add one additional piece, which is going to be the user.email. And this will be set to the uh, GitHub email. So now I have like a pretty full JWT that can be used already on Netlify. And I'll show you what that looks like. The way we actually make use of this is inside of our netlify.toml file, we specify that whenever a user is trying to access slash dashboard, we actually want to redirect this to the dashboard.html file. And we only want to allow access if they have a Netlify role of either admin or contributor. So in this case, with the JWT rules that I've set up, uh, if you are, according to this rule, uh, if you have ever committed to this open source repository, you'll be allowed to see our dashboard. So you can see how I'm able to combine lots of different um, intricate uh, authorization rules in one central place and use it in, for example, uh, Netlify. Similarly, um, with my own API, this is all it takes. With one additional NPM package, you can annotate your API and simply say, uh, in order to access, for example, this field in our GraphQL API, you must be authenticated. And in order to access these fields of uh, a company, for example, you have to have at least one of these roles. So you either must be an auditor, or in the case of account balance, uh, you must be either a finance or an admin um, person to be able to access it. In this case, maybe we would change this to be a contributor. And now the JWT will allow you to access this specific field if you have uh, contributed to this API. And that's it. You don't need to do any other uh, authentication or authorization logic on your server. This will handle, be handled entirely in this one central place. And if that's not enough, you can always come in here uh, and we will generate the required GraphQL query that's necessary in order to satisfy both the uh, prerequisites, the conditions, and also the effects, so any of the built-in values. And then we also have the JavaScript code, which will work off of the results of that query and uh, create the same JWT for you. So you can use this as a starting point and then add in your additional logic. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And just to show how it works, um, I'm gonna go ahead and go into our uh, Explorer and see what happens whenever we log in. So right now I'm logging into GitHub. I'm gonna log out. I'm going to log in. This is exactly what my users would see whenever I ask them to log into GitHub. I'll go ahead and authorize. And now whenever I look at our storage, so let's go ahead and pull this out. You can see that I have this uh, access token in here. So let's go ahead and json.parse this. We'll pull out the access token. That looks pretty good. And what I'm gonna do is uh, just copy this. I'll go over to JWT.io where I can inspect it. I'll paste it in. And you can see that it has all of the data that we would expect based off of my GitHub status uh, inside of there. So this is exactly what we were wanting. Um, I was able to set up uh, authentication and authorization for several different apps all in one place in just a few minutes.